What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 9 of The Race here with Kingston Sprint and we are back continuing on with our playoff march and today we are of course taking on the big dogs themselves. We're taking on Toronto FC who actually currently hold the title as the Eastern Conference kind of victors. I believe going back to the last season so they are kind of the team to beat in our conference and we meet them today. Of course they finished top of the supporter shield but bit of injury news. Sebastian Giovinco twisted ankle will be interesting to see if they risk him going into today's game today just a little bit of news before we get into today's game of course one match played since the last episode that was the jff champions cup final we lost it and we lost it on penalties but it doesn't tell half the story um <sighs> This is one of the most mad games I've ever had in Football Manager. If you follow me on Twitter, at Jaxy, J-A-K-Z-E-H, you already know what happened because I tweeted about this. We had two sendings off. Now, two sendings off in a final, you know, it's normally not ideal and that would be pretty bad. Andre Blake got injured as well. We were down to eight men in extra time with Decoy Williams, who got man of the match, playing in goal for us. Now, unfortunately... He couldn't pull off the heroics in the penalty shootout, and as you can see, we lost 8-7. That's right, every single one of our players took a penalty. Unfortunately, Amadou Dia, he missed his. He, he had the one to take to keep us in it, and he wasted the opportunity. And as a result, as you can see, we did lose 8-7. But just a mad sequence of events to go down to eight men in a big cup final. Granted, a competition, the board, they don't care that much about. It would have been nice to win it. Um, but yeah, a bit decoy Williams, you know, you've got a place in my heart and in Football Manager Hall of Fame as far as I'm concerned for getting man of the match playing in goal for the last 15 minutes uh, of a cup final and actually making a fair few saves in that added time. But anyway, we now have to focus on the here and now with Toronto. Uh, obviously, Andre Blake got injured in that game. That match was only two days ago, so I did already kind of rotate my team very heavily going into that match. You can see here Andre Blake out of a dislocated shoulder. That is his season over. As a result, McPherson, I mean, he didn't think he was going to be playing much more this year. He played four games for us and got two clean sheets earlier on in the season. Of course, has been out for a little while with a torn calf muscle. But, well, welcome back to the team, McPherson. Um, I need you to be a hero, please. It's going to be a big step up for him today. Looking across the rest of the team, some good news. Aikapara back in the squad. Lacking match sharpness, but his overall condition is very, very good indeed. And if we just look at his achievements here... Uh, and when it comes to awards, uh, he was shortlisted for MLS Defender of the Year, but he's actually won American Player of the Year, which is an absolutely incredible kind of feat for him to do. He beat out the likes of Brad Guz and also Ramirez, the Minnesota striker. Uh, both of those players came runner-up to get this award. And I mean, fair play to him. He has put in just a set of really solid performances this year. It's really been a shame about the injuries he's had, because without them... Like, we, we are just kind of a completely different side, I think, if he plays every single game for us. Anyway, looking across the rest of our team, O'Neill Fisher at right back, fairly standard. Jermaine Taylor, back in the side, of course, got a goal in that last previous kind of playoff uh, round against Philadelphia. Kamal Lawrence at left back. In the centre of the midfield, of course, we still have some injury problems. Also, a bit of rotation needed due to a lack of condition. Obviously, lots of players playing for 120 minutes two days ago in the kind of Jamaican FA Cup final. So, it is a little bit of a problem there, particularly in the midfield. Michael Carrick was rested, so he's okay. Um, Jack Daniel Johnson as well, he was rested. So his condition's okay. Uh, Pelosi and Harris perhaps struggling just a little bit. Up top, we do go with Andre Clennon and Julian Green. These two players actually both came on as a double sub at half-time in the game just two days ago. So they have played quite a lot of football, obviously, with added time and the 45 minutes. It kind of all adds up. As a result, you can see match condition just lacking a little bit. I have put these players on rest, so they weren't in training yesterday, but it's still a little bit of a struggle. Anyway, on the bench, we're going to go with a goalkeeper just in case. I feel like I've been warned enough about all these injuries. But other players, Decoy Williams and Amadou uh, Dia on the bench. You can see the condition just not great in these players because they played in that Jamaican kind of cup game. Scott Coldwell, also an option, as is Ricardo Morris. And Alan Otti and Jason Johnson also waiting in the wings if necessary. Anyway, this first leg against Toronto is at home. I'm hoping we can have a fantastic start. So far, our form in the playoffs has been very, very good. However, obviously, Ike Parra back in the team. Fantastic news. 
I am really, really worried about McPherson in goal. I think that could be problematic for us. Um, another concern I have a little bit is um, obviously without Jermaine Anderson in the centre of midfield. We're a little bit weaker there as well, and Carrick's going to have his work cut out, I think. Looking at Toronto side, they are playing a narrow system as well. However, they are playing more of a diamond as opposed to a flat three. Worth noting, Giovinco is being risked. You can see here, uh, he's currently out with a twisted ankle. I mean, part of me hopes that he aggravates that injury a little bit so that he isn't available for the next game. Either way, though, let's get a good performance here against Toronto, of course. We did do a live comm against Toronto earlier on in the season. It was a game that I believe we lost 2-1, but it was 1-1 up until injury time, and we kind of let it slip. So I'm hoping that today, you know, we learn, to learn from those lessons. I think our squad is slightly stronger than it was then. I think there were a few players on international duty at the time. But, um, I mean, it's still going to be a massive, massive kind of challenge. And I think for McPherson in goal, number 38... This is a game to really kind of either remember him by for a good or bad reason. I don't feel like he's going to have a, an average game as a goalkeeper. I feel like we're going to scrutinise his every move or praise every save he makes. Anyway, Toronto with the ball coming forward here. Altidore spreads out wide tomorrow, the left back. Going to be a little bit of an interesting battle out wide. Of course, both fullbacks for each team expected to provide a lot of whiffs. So it's very much going to be kind of a one-on-one a -on -one battle. Anyway, Michael Carrick losing the ball in a horrific position there. We could be in all kinds of trouble. Giovinco. Well, McPherson, what a stop that is. Giovinco carrying the injury should have scored it. Two minutes gone. I said he'll be remembered as a hero or a villain. McPherson, at the moment, you're a hero, son. But Giovinco still at the edge of the box. Jermaine Taylor, lovely tackle, of course. Giovinco, he's got that injury. As I said, wouldn't feel too bad if he aggravated it a little bit. You know, it's a twisted ankle. It's the kind of injury which can go a little bit wrong. And, uh, well, we need to deal with this here, and we've not dealt with it. O'Neill Fisher couldn't get it away to safety. It fell to Craig Morgan in the box. And a set piece for Toronto sees them take an early lead in this game. You can see, looking at the stats, they've created a lot more. They've been a lot better. And, uh, to be honest, part of me is already contemplating switching to a slightly different C system and maybe playing a wide 4-2-3-1. Because they're playing a narrower system like us and because they do have just better quality, it is going to cause us some problems. And that is something that, I don't know, if I can uh, like address in any way, maybe by trying to stretch them wider, it may well be in my interest to do. If we did want to go with a wider system, it would probably be the 4-2-3-1 as opposed to the 4-4-2. Although the 4-4-2 might work slightly better. It's a case of, do I want to play a 4-4-2, I guess, as much as anything? Um, and can we play it, I guess? If we were going to play it, it would have to be something like this. Um, with Pelosi and Daniel Johnson on the evil wing. I'd be tempted to change Clennon to like a defensive forward. And then we'll play Julian Green as the advance forward. I think I'm going to make these changes. It's a little bit of a kind of radical change in system early on. But this is a, a system that I do feel like kind of suits our team and the players that we've got. And, uh, well, they are causing us all kinds of problems at the moment, Toronto. Part of me is also contemplating dropping, well, Carrick deeper. And, well, it doesn't really matter what tactical decisions you make. If Giovinco scores a free kick like that, he's just hit it from miles out and it's sailed into the top corner. Giovinco, he's carrying that injury. I mean, you wouldn't know it. There's a reason they've risked him today. McPherson couldn't get a hand to it. It's a fantastic free kick. It finds its way into that top corner. And, uh, well, I can't even really fault the 4-4-2 for that, can I? Toronto, they're still on top in this game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a wider diamond. I mean, we could go for a narrower diamond, but then we're kind of just back at square one, aren't we? Let's play full uh, wide midfielders on support. And I want us to play fairly narrow, and then I'm actually going to look for the fullbacks to look for the overlap. So hopefully the centre mids are going to tuck in. And uh, we can try and make something happen. But, well, two goals down. We're at home. This was the leg where we had a chance, I felt, to kind of put the pressure onto Toronto, going back to Toronto. But, I mean, it's worth emphasising. This Toronto side, a very, very talented side. A side who, they, they walked uh, the supporter shield. They finished 11 points ahead of us in the league. They were very comfortable for much of the season. But it's the playoffs. And the playoffs are kind of, you feel like, where anything can happen. And, well... Everything's happened but a scoring at the moment. It's been a very, very disappointing um, kind of match as far as we're concerned. This second half, you know, Toronto, they've continued to have chances. They've not had as many clear-cut chances. We are trying to apply pressure high up the pitch here, but you can see kind of Toronto playing into the gaps. Nice header by Taylor there, but, I mean, we're immediately back on the back foot. 
and it's uh, Michael Bradley, the American, kind of playing the ball around from deep. Now with Delgado. And, uh, well, if they get a third now, I don't want to say it'd be game over, but we'd probably have to reply before the game's over. And, well, they do take the lead here now. And I need to change some stuff. We need to try and make something happen in this game. In terms of what we can try, I kind of feel like our options are a little bit limited, if I'm honest. I'm going to take off Harris and bring on Ricardo Morris. Um... But yeah, Alan Otti, I guess, could bring on out wide on the right. You'd have to say Julian Green has had a very, very poor game indeed. We're going to go for a system um, which I actually used when I was managing Tottenham right at the start of this year's Football Manager. I've not really tried it in this year's match engine, but it does suit our players. But, well, we've got this to deal with. And, well, Lawrence, fantastic clearance, but it's not fully clear. And you just feel a little bit vulnerable. And, well, I mean, our dream is just dying here brutally. It's not even like we've put up much of a fight. Toronto, they've turned up on the day. They've had two clear-cut chances. They've had two half chances, and they've taken every single one. And, uh, well, the ball there, it's a nice finish. I feel like Andre Blake probably makes a few of saves in these goals that we've conceded. I feel like lacking our first-choice goalkeeper is just a massive, massive problem indeed. You'd have to say Ikepara, USA Player of the Season, on a 6.0... He's had an absolute nightmare in this first leg, and there's still another 90 minutes of football to go. I mean, we are going to have to do a Barcelona-esque comeback, it seems, in the second leg. That is going to be unbelievably difficult, you'd think. Um, but, I mean, we've got to try and make something happen. 4-0. We've been absolutely humiliated. We've not really been at the races. We've tried a few different systems. None of them have really clicked. You'd have to say that Toronto have really just emphasised their superior quality on the pitch and uh, well unless we're going to get a very very late consolation area which we're not now it is just going to finish 4-0 in this first leg I have a week to try and get the players kind of back on the square and narrow but we have been absolutely destroyed in this first leg and uh, well if we could just try and win the second leg I guess that would be a good kind of baby step way to start here worth noting Jamaican coach attended the game was having a look at a lot of our players for the future kind of Jamaican national team squad which I guess is good um, but, well, maybe it's not so good that he came to that game in particular because that was awful. Anyway, the next game we've got against Toronto is in just over a week's time. Gives players a chance to get back to full fitness. Um, obviously, massive, massive deficit to try and turn around here. Hopefully, we can have a go at it. Don't go anywhere. Second match coming your way in just a second. Okay, guys, so here we are. We are back for the Eastern Conference playoff final against Toronto. It just feels a little bit silly to be sat here, doesn't it? 4-0 down. Can we do it? I don't think so. I feel like I feel like we just kind of are turning up. Do you know what I mean? We don't really want to be here for this second leg. We just we, we have to be. We're not we're not allowed to not turn up for the game, unfortunately. We've got to try and make something happen. But um we need to really book up our ideas. I'm gonna keep with an narrow, narrower system. This is a system that on its day has performed superbly. Obviously, we've had uh, great success against the likes of New York City FC. Um, but I do feel like this Toronto system kind of just hard counters us a little bit. Of course, when we played Toronto, uh, not Toronto, when we played New York City FC, we won 5 or 6-1. That would be enough to take this game to extra time or even win it in normal time. And I feel like that's what we've got to try and aim to do here. We've just got to go out there. We've got to try and score four goals. You know, that's the minimum that we need if we play flawlessly defensively, which I think it'd be fair to say we haven't done too often this year. But... We're going to give it a go. We're going to turn up here, give it our best shot. I want to try and end the season on a little high. Even if it was just to win this game against Toronto, that would be a silver lining. But, well, Josie Altidore's through. He slots it away. That's probably game over now at 5-0. Part of me still wants to believe it could be possible. But, well, we came out of the gate in this game, kind of on the attack. We were going to push forward. We needed four goals. I wasn't going to sit back and just kind of play damage limitation. And, uh, well, unfortunately for us, Altador gets in behind and uh, manages to slot the ball away quite nicely. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. Unfortunately, you know, he breaks through there, pokes it away with that left peg of his keeper, doesn't get there. And, uh, well, he, he runs off to celebrate, whereas our players, hands in heads, that's probably game over. Going into this match, we knew we had to kind of not concede too many early on. I want to try and avoid a kind of... Uh, I guess Arsenal v Bayern Munich situation as best as possible. You know, we don't want to lose by eight goals kind of combined over the two games. It'd be nice to try and get a goal or two just to try and reinstate some dignity. But, well, Giovinco turns it. McPherson in goal. 
he doesn't really save that the most convincingly uh, of ways, does he? The, the goalkeeper there, of course. A player come into the side for Andre Blake. He's actually playing captain uh, automatically because obviously Jermaine Anderson's out injured. Um, and our other captain's out as well, or our vice captain. Julian Green, he looked offside. He is offside. Stop celebrating, boys. Get back behind the ball. Linesman flag went up immediately. And, uh, well, the, the celebrations, they were short-lived. I didn't celebrate. I wasn't going to get my hopes up. Julian Green was loving it. But, uh, well, he'll have to wait. It was Carrick. Okay, well, Michael Carrick just scored an absolute... I mean, he, he's, he's twatted that into the back of the net. I contemplated, did I want to swear or not? But I feel like it's the only adjective to use. On the volley, bang. I mean, the keeper, he gets his hands on it, but it's probably broken his wrist uh, there as, uh, well, he could only parry it into the roof of the net. And, well, we have our consolation goal. Can we can we build some momentum? One more goal now. We only need three in the second half, then, to take it to extra time. I'll start to believe. Kamal Lawrence, lovely tackle by him. Cleared away. Daniel Johnson, Clennon. Julian Green, make something happen here. Let's get another before half time. Let's try and make... Oh, Never mind. Never mind. I don't know what Julian's tried then. Well, I do know what he's tried. He's tried to shoot from like 40 yards out. Um, I'm going to tell the world, let's show the world what this team's all about, shall we? I don't know how many people in the world are going to be watching this uh, MLS playoff game. I can't say uh, I've ever taken the time to watch an MLS kind of playoff game other than the MLS Cup final itself in real life. But let's show the world or whatever residents of the world happen to be watching this game what we're all about. An hour gone. It's still 1-1. Maybe slightly losing hope at this point of getting the win and getting four goals. But, um, well, Julian Green, you've not had a great game. Neither has Andre Clennon either. Both these strikers just kind of, they've been a bit absent, haven't they? It'd be a, a fair assessment, I think, to say they've just not turned up in these latter playoff games after what was a superb performance against Philadelphia and even against New York City before that. Just this this kind of sequence of results and fixtures against Toronto has uh, just shown us to be a little bit perhaps one-dimensional. Although Otty, nice ball pulled back. Morris, I mean, he's forced Irwin into a stopping goal there. It was great play by Otty out wide. Unfortunately, he couldn't get there. If we could win this leg, I mean, that would be... A little bit of dignity restored, perhaps. It's a a pretty tight game, although Giovinco's through here. Can the keeper make a stop? He tries to dink him. It's very cheeky by Giovinco. It does go over the crossbar. McPherson gets that goal kick to take him. Well, McPherson on a 6.8. I can't blame him completely. I mean, going into this leg, we needed a miracle. I mean, the miracle, it might still be on. Ikapara, first goal of the season for him. He's had a great season when he's been fit. It's a shame how bad he was in the last game against Toronto. But it was a lovely header by him there. Cushioned it. Didn't even jump. In off the woodwork. I mean, do I just... I feel like at this point, I probably just throw men forward. Like, is it... It's probably just worth it to just kind of throw Kamar Lawrence and Fisher kind of as wing-backs on support. Uh, wing-backs on attack forward. We've not really got a whole lot to lose, have we, if we're being completely honest here. Let's play a higher line, higher tempo. Not long left in this game. Let's just try and make something happen. We need three goals. We've got a set piece here. I want to believe Carrick whips it in. It's cleared away. It's probably just a pointless highlight. Either that or Toronto are about to hit us on the counter and immediately shut down any hope of a comeback before the tactical changes even come into effect. And, well, it was the former. It was a pointless highlight. And, well, you can see there's just no more highlights happening. It's going to be game over here. We're actually going to win the return leg against Toronto 2-1. But, well, when you lose 4-0 in the first leg of the playoffs. Um, it's a bit of an uphill battle, isn't it? I think that's a fair way to describe it. And unfortunately for us, we are going to get eliminated here in this Eastern Conference playoff final. Um, obviously not a bad first season at all, not by any means, just one game away from reaching the MLS Cup final. It's a shame, I guess, the nature of the defeat here. But, um, I mean, it, it's, it's a good result, I guess, on the night. The 4-0 defeat. There wasn't a lot we could really expect from this return leg. So to see the players kind of turn up and give a half good performance is decent, I guess. Julian Green got a strained wrist. You might as well just go to the physio and not worry about playing games because that is the end of our season. Uh, unfortunately for us, and well, we are going to have to settle for, well, fourth, I guess, theoretically. Second best in our conference. Fourth in the overall MLS standards. You can see in the support shield we finished third. 
Um, I mean, not not a bad first season by any means whatsoever. I do think we were the beneficiaries. The fact, obviously, is a newly established Jamaican side. There were a lot of players based in Jamaica who were very keen to join us, who I was able to get on cheaper wages. It's going to be interesting to see over the next kind of, I guess, off season in the next few years, can we maintain that? I don't know how plausible that's going to be. I feel like there might be a little bit of kind of having to take a few steps backwards to then move forwards. Obviously, next episode will be an end of season review. It's been a good season as far as I'm concerned, though. I feel like the players played very well indeed across the overall season performed beyond my expectations not massively beyond them I wanted to try and get to the playoffs but to reach if we just look here the Eastern Conference Final that's nothing to be scoffed at whatsoever obviously in the North American Champions League as well I didn't think we played too badly either we finished second in our group and I think all in all this has just been a very very good first season to hopefully build upon um, obviously in the coming years here at Kingston Sprint but anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode from me. As I said, next episode will be an end-of-season review. I'm actually contemplating doing a starter-season episode every year, which would be a slightly shorter video where we cover all of the drafts, um, the potentially the Caribbean Club Championship, which, of course, happens before the MLS tournament. Um, obviously, any kind of... Di uh, what would you call them? I guess issues I come across in pre-season could be interesting to talk about. I think the drafts are the big appeal. Obviously, we might have to waive some players. The contract negotiations in MLS are fairly significant. There could be some interesting stuff there that would be kind of enough to condense down into its own standalone episode, but I guess you guys will have to wait and see on that. Anyway, if you have enjoyed, leave a like. Let me know what you made of our season here at Kingston Sprint, and if you want to give a prediction or a goal for me to, I guess, try and achieve next season, I'd love to hear what you think is realistically achievable here in MLS in our second season. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you for watching, guys. It is me, Jack. I will see you guys next time, and uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.